So our man, Mr. Tim Ward, folks, okay, is also going to be doing a workshop. This workshop is a week from today. And, you know, the first one that Tim did, bottom line, we were talking about, you know, how do you, how do you look at bottoms? Well, this next one here is the secret science of market tops. You're going to love it. Next Thursday, the 14th, so from 4 to 5.30, folks, it's only $149. Bottom line, come over to our website at TFNN. We get the, dollar, the Tiger Dollar sale going on simultaneously. You're going to get a great workshop. You're going to really get to understand, uh, number one, uh, what to look for at bottoms and what to look for at tops. And, you know, neither Tim nor myself or anyone else, we're not saying it's a crystal ball, but you can see the consistency of what, what Tim does, folks, okay? It is pretty intense, okay? Because we, you know, we're going on six or seven months right now. First he hit gold, then he, bottom line, hit the S&P. And now, you know, bottom line, we'll see whether we're coming into a top or not. Tim Ord, what's going on? Uh, all right, got you some charts over your way. We'll take a look at them. You um, certainly do. Let's these, do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah chart one. Uh, yeah, just give me just give me one be, second, uh, Tim. On, uh, that webinar uh, a week from today. So, uh, but anyhow, this is kind of a teasing, I guess. Um, yeah. Good. Uh, what to look for, but uh, the first chart, uh, anyhow, the bottom window is the SPY. Okay. Uh, next higher window is the VIX. VIX really is a great indicator, especially when you combine it with other things. And the top window is the uh, SPX VIX ratio. Yes. And uh, I got a pink area, kind of. If you can see the July area, I kind of uh, I can you where the S and P's are making higher highs, and that ratio yep. was making higher lows. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we got out in July it was because of that. Right. And. Uh, uh, I want to point out we have something something similar on a little bit smaller time frame. If you look over to, way over to the right of uh, the right window, okay, far right window there, you can kind of see it a lot better. But you can see the S and P's in general kind of working higher, kind of making higher highs, higher lows. Well, that uh, ratio, which is the top window, is actually making lower lows. Look at and that! You can, really huh? see, you okay. can see the VIX there. Uh, as the market goes up, you should have the the VIX really trades opposite. Of the S S and P and the yes. S and P's, right? So, but when, when both of them are going up, that's usually uh, a negative sign for the market, and so that's what we have right now. Uh, how long can this last? You know, that last one, you know, it, it went up for almost a month uh, okay. before the market actually turned down. Yeah, and we've been going up uh, for you know, I don't know, close to two weeks now, maybe a week, a week right. and a half, whatever. So what I'm saying is this this divergence uh, where both of them are going up at the same time can last a while. So, you know, what good is that, you know? Well, and, and that's, and that's too, you know, I'm glad you're bringing this up, Tim, because that, you know, like the market tops, folks, okay, go on much longer than <laughs> than you want them to go on most times. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. You know. They, 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 can, they can just... You know, you short, and they keep kind of pushing higher. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's it's yeah. So you got to really watch what's, what's kind of going on. But you know, there's a divergence there. So at the moment, you're not bullish. Uh, so can it go higher? Yeah, I can squeak up higher. But as long as those two, uh, long as the um, uh, VIX or VIX keeps going up with the S and P's, that divergence persistent. And at, at some point, you're going to turn down. So let's look at another ratio. Okay. On page on chart two. Okay. Uh, this one actually is one of the reasons why it got me short um, back in the July top. That ratio uh, uh, was. Uh, this is kind of the same thing here. You got the SPs going up, and you got this. Uh, this the middle window is a TLT, which is a bond market. Yes. To the BBIX, which is VIX of the VIX. So when the, the VIX, VIX goes up, or the BBX, VIX of the VIX goes up before the VIX goes up. So it anticipates, when that VBIX starts going up, it anticipates at some point the the uh, VIX will start going up. Okay. So uh, that's how that works. So it's a little bit uh, quicker signal using the BBIX uh, than the uh, VIX. So anyhow, I did that, 
And uh, so normally, you know, the TLT kind of r- really trades off to, of the, it's not an ideal world, but it does kind of trade off to the S&Ps when that tilt's going up, a lot of times Mark's going down. And it's kind of a safe haven, so it's a good indicator um, uh, to have to try to figure out where that market's going to reverse. If you remember, back in October 27th, we got long. Oh, yeah. Uh, on that. And that, was it. that was the day of the low we went long. And the reason why we went long is because this ratio was going straight up. Nice. Um, and if you if you remember, and- folks, October 27th, that was a bad day in the marketplace. So I can see why Tim also did it, because there was some fear there, wasn't there? That, that's yeah. yeah, pretty cool. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and prowl. So we have the Dow up 73, NASDAQ up 189, S&P's up 34. We're talking with our man, man, Mr. Tim Moore. He's bringing us through these different things that he's looking at for market tops. Now, what's going on, folks, is uh, next Thursday, Tim's going to be doing a workshop. You can be in that workshop. It's only $149. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right into featured content. Uh, it's going to be an hour and a half. This, these, these tools, folks, no one has these tools, number one, okay? You're going to have them all. You can go over the archive as many times as you want. You can put the formulas in a spreadsheet, you're, and you're off to the races. And you, you just have to do a little work when you, you know, do these every night. Every night. That's the bottom line. But guess what? Do you want to make money or not make money? That's what it comes down to. So, Tim, we're looking at this, uh, uh, this chart yeah, sure. num- yeah. number two. Chart yeah. two, actually, I got this is the close of yesterday. Okay. And in the middle window is that TLT yes. to uh, BBIX ratio, and it's making higher highs along with the S and P's making higher highs. Right. Okay. That's that's bullish. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now flip to chart three. Okay. Now this is today's. So, and uh, this is updated today. As that was yesterday, so we didn't close at a new high. We actually right. closed a little bit lower. So this the divergence went away, or the bullish divergence went away today. So now you, you're pretty much, you know, you're, you're making a little bit lesser highs still. So you got a divergence. You got the TLT VIX ratio making a little bit lower highs as the SP still making higher highs. So that puts back on the negative divergence, I guess you might say. Yes. So now you got the um, uh, SPX, the VIX ratio divergence, which can go on for weeks. You got this is a little bit, sh- uh, this is a little bit shorter term, but you still have a divergence. So it still suggests at some point we're going into a high. Uh, so right. Um, you're getting a little I more. Have, I don't know. You're getting a little I'm more information, you know, right? That you know, it's getting more dangerous up here, basically, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at last Friday's high, we had high volume. Yes. I don't have that volume short. We talked about it. I think last Thursday. Yeah. I thought last uh, Friday's high, or maybe it was Tuesday. Last Friday's high. I bet there's a good chance we're going to test that because we had high volume. Yeah, so 89 million. Volume, right. Which we haven't touched it yet, but we may touch it tomorrow. Uh, and these versions are still present. Uh, these bearish divergence are still present. That potentially could end up with a sell signal. We'll have to wait and see. Don't know yet, but let's look. So that's the short-term trend. The short-term trend is uh, it shows bearish divergence. I'll put it that way. No okay. signal yet. but So let's look at the bigger term. Okay. So, you know, it is not like this is going to be a great big top and we're going to go down to zero on the SPs. No, we're not. And this is the reason why. Uh, on this chart, chart number four, okay. the bottom window is the SPY, and the next window up is the SPX fixed ratio. And uh, the last time uh, we were talking back in May, I thought that, you know, the market's going to hit higher. And the reason why I said that was because of this ratio. The ratio is making higher highs where the SPYs was basically matching its previous highs. Well, the SPY VIX ratio leads the S&Ps. So we have a kind of a similar story. Right now we're testing the um, July highs or early or July highs, and this ratio is making higher highs. Wow. So at some point, we could have minor pullbacks, just like we be- did back in April, sure. May. We see you know, pullbacks there. Nothing real significant, but you know, just 
probably we need the arms to get up there. So you get these pullbacks, the arms goes, you know, up to one and a half twos. You get enough energy to probably rally through. So I'm thinking we're going to pull back to around 440. Uh, this ratio already shows a bullish divergence. So it gives you confidence to buy on that decline. Right. Uh, because the bigger trend is still up according to this ratio. And it does a pretty good job picking out the lows, too. If you go back and look at the uh, May-June low, yes, uh, which is that red box there, that ratio is going a little bit higher highs. I see it. The market's going through the floors. Uh, so look at that, you folks. Okay, if, you're, there. If, you're, if you're in your car, remember this is archive, too, folks, because that, that is, look at that, man. It, it almost got down to the bottom, but it didn't. Interesting, man. Yeah, and that was the low. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that was, that was the low. So, so you know, you know, the most, you know, and actually, look at the top window there too. Yep. Normally, the the VIX will start going up before the market actually tops. Yes. And usually, it gets above seventeen when those tops come in. Okay. Uh, and so we got as I did this chart, we're at thirteen. And so, even though we're kind of consolidating here, we may have a the minor pullback. Just to probably scare everybody for you know a week or so, uh, then probably you know the Christmas rally will start and we'll rally to year end. But usually the VIX will go up and above seventeen. You're getting above seventeen is when you have to really start watching the market. Even though the market may be going up, if that VIX is up past seventeen. Chances are you're going to enter some pretty turbulent water. Oh yeah, uh, where uh, the market. Uh, you um, know, it's pretty wild, Tim. Market. Is it? You know, so. right now we've been the VIX is just hanging out here, and it's been hanging really in the same place uh, minus one day for like ten trading days so far. You know, yeah. oscillating around yeah, the it, thirteen mark. You know, so it's pretty wild. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but on the bigger time frames, it looks fine. On short term time frames, you know, if you go back to, uh, can we go back to chart one real quick? Yep, absolutely. Um. So that you know that you can't really see it on the bigger time frames, but the short term time frame is is the VIX too. It's been going up. It was low as looks like in the elevens. You know now you're around the thirteenth going up. That even though it's a minor divergence, uh, you still probably get some short short term reaction to it. Okay. So so you're looking now. If we go back to chart four again. If okay. You can, okay, I got back it. There you. Yep. Yeah, see if you see that over the last couple of weeks, how the VIX has kind of turned down. I do, I do. That, that yep. ratio. So that's what we're looking at on a real small time frame. The SPs keep making higher highs. Yep. That ratio is going down. So you're probably going to get some sort of reaction here uh, soon, you know, not months away, you know, no, I'm with days you. away. Hey, let, me, let me ask you this. I, I, I don't think I've ever asked you this. What made you, I mean, I know you do so much work in the marketplace, okay? And this goes, folks, the first time I met Tim, I think, is, well, on, you know, on the, first time I met him in person was 96, but I think I, I met him in, like, I had him on 94. What, how did you come to the conclusion that you're going to start using some of these ratios looking at the marketplace? I just needed something more than what the trend was giving me. Yeah. And, uh, okay. uh, you know, trend works great, you know, but, you know, even that last low of October 27th, the trend, yeah. the 10 day trend never even got close to, to 1.2. Okay, um, cool. Okay. So, and, and these ratios actually have helped me, to, you know, how did I come up with the ratio? I'm thinking, you know, I like the VIX. VIX has a lot of information, so I started messing with the SPX VIX ratio. Then nice. I started, you know, the bond market has a lot to do with the, oh, the stock market. Ev totally. So I, so I started uh, messing around with the TLT. And, cool. Okay. And, uh, and just, you know, through trial and error and, you know, and just yep. started screwing with it. And then over the years, so of it, course, it gets consistent. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Man. Just stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up uh, 49, NASDAQ up 181, SP's up 31. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We are talking with Tim. We are talking about uh, these different types of ratios, folks, that Tim uses that he's going to be teaching uh, at TFNN next Thursday. So go to the front page of TFNN and uh, uh, featured content. You can uh, sign up right now, and you're going to be very happy you did. Okay, Tim. All right. So we got a chart four. So, you know, the bigger picture, uh, because of the... Uh, 
SPX VIX ratio making higher highs, where the SPs are still testing the previous uh, July highs, it says at some point we'll make a higher highs because the SPY VIX ratio leads the way. So let's go to chart five. Okay. And uh, uh, this chart, you know, this is uh, it's not really a ratio. This is a McCollin OS, or actually the top window is the McCollin uh, summation index. Yep. And uh, it it works pretty good. Uh, I kind of, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, I, I do it with my trend. You know, it gets below minus 700. You're going into a climatic low. And a, a, uh, so that's, you know, that's all the blue lines across the chart there. Yes. The times when the summation index hits below minus 700. And uh, October 27th, we were, I think, eight, minus 813. So we hit the climatic low. Um, you know, in that vicinity. So, you know, my downside was pretty minimal. I mean, can it go below, you know, down to a thousand? Yeah, but, you know, 90%, you know, rally, in my opinion, was over, you know. Um, right. So I, I had to worry about Monday or Tuesday, probably, if it right. was going to go down. Actually, not the uh, rally, a uh, more downdraft, you mean, right? Yeah. Right, yeah, because yeah. you already got the downdraft already there, right. you know, that's. I looked at the summation, you know, it was minus 800. I mean, how low can we go? Well, we can go right. lower. Hey, but t- Tim, general, wh- what was the uh, uh, decline's done? Right. So. I I know that the sun runs it now, but what was what was the father's name? Um. Oh yeah, Tom and uh, Tom, because you know he's the so one no, that he's the no, one. Tom is the son. Oh, Tom's the son, but oh, Sherman, right? Sherman, Sherman, Sherman. That's right, Sherman. Well, Sherman's the one that gave me your number. You know, he he didn't want to oh. come on. I, I I just realized this, man. I was calling people up, folks, okay? And, and I saw this thing, this immersion today. I was like, what is this thing? He's the one that gave me your number. He says, no, I don't want to, you know, be on. I'm, you know, just not that type of person. He's the one that gave me your number. And then I, I had Tom on, of course, after that, because Sherman only did it a few more years, and then Tom took it over. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's crazy. Matter of fact, they uh, invited me out to uh, uh, California. They were doing... Um, Oh, investment club out there, and they had that investment club. I they see. Probably, um, I don't know, the people, when I showed up, I was one of the, or actually him and uh, Sherman spoke, then I spoke. So it was just two of us, but they paid my way out there. And, yeah. And I gave my, I was doing my tick, and you remember that tick thing I was doing? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, you know, so. I still love uh, that tick thing, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's you know, you you got to find things that give give you a panic. You know, right. As long as, you know, people are screaming and hollering and stuff, and that tick's going nuts, you know, you're totally. more closer to a bottom than a top. So, and, but yeah, it works great. And as with so, Tim. Yeah, I went, presented it out there, and I met Sherman, met, nice. met Tom, and, and uh, so. And, uh, and folks, anyhow, with, What's well, cool? Let's get back to this. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's, yeah. yeah, they're both nice people. And yeah. So anyway, we we got minus eight hundred on October twenty seventh. That turned out to be the low. And so, how the summation thing works? You want a, a selling climax, and others reading below minus seven hundred. Then you want a buying climax, and that's a reading above plus one thousand. And you like to happen within two months. Yep. So October twenty seventh was the low. That's when we might hit minus eight hundred. As I did this today, we're at 461, approximately. So we got about, you know, 540 to go before we reached 1,000. And we like to have that happen around December 27th or before. Yes. Which is about, what, another two weeks away, three weeks away, whatever. Right. So now if we do get that, you know, that adds quite a bit of oomph to the bigger trend. Oh, yeah. You have two of them. Pretty much in a row. We had one uh, coming in, um, you know, first of the year. That was October. Then actually January, we had you had October. You had the selling climax blow seven hundred. Then you had the uh, buying climax in January. So that's actually about three months. Not ideal. And now you get another one. Uh, you know, selling climax October twenty seventh. And say something, you know, by end of December, if we get up to less one thousand, that would bode well probably over the next six months at least. I see. Because when you get these signals, if you go back and look, this chart goes back to two thousand seven. Right. You know, sometimes those signals last years. Right. You know, 
you got one I, I know the uh, you know the covid crash which is a uh, march of 2020 yes you know the market went straight up for what two years yeah exactly exactly so, so you know that would bode well so um don't know if it'll happen but if, we, if it does happen um uh, you know you can't really be bearish so um so i don't know we'll, we'll see but the bigger trend at the moment is still up right so i, I, don't, I don't see a a big top here forming even though there's quite a bit of bearish talk out there so oh there's yeah, plenty of bearish numbers. talk out here this is what's actually so cool folks okay because you know the euphoria is not out here <laughs> and so that's pretty yeah. intense man and we're right next to highs that that's what's really weird tim do you know what i mean when you think about it um and i guess it's because been a year and a half that, you know, we went down and, you know, unless you're doing this every day, I don't think people realize how close we are to the highs, actually. Yeah, yeah, but we're awful close to the highs, you know. Uh, so, so I don't know, it's just, we'll, we'll get a scare, I think, here probably next week, you know, yeah. because of the charts I showed you. And that, you know, and ideally you want that trend to go up right through the, ceiling right and uh and to get some panic going and you know and that builds energy for the next rally yep so uh we can flip through the gold market real quick we've absolutely got good that everyone wants to hear that that's for sure okay so i get the weekly gold shot up but the weekly xau uh, uh gold ratio and then the weekly xau cool okay all right. Uh, this chart goes back to 2013, and what it is, is just the RSI of that ratio. And every time you get it uh, below uh, 30, in other words, that's when gold stocks' relation to gold is going down a lot faster than gold's going down. Yes. So when 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 the that ratio is getting killed, gold stocks are actually getting killed. Right. And uh, and that's when the opportunity rises. So you're trying to pick out. The worst top possibly uh, ratio to find, and when the RSI gets below 30, that's usually a good OM, which we did have two signals back in 2022, one in July and one in September. Because the RSI uh, hit below 30, went up a little bit, and hit below 30 again, so it kind of gave a double signal. And it's a good signal also for at least uh, near mid term tops when this ratio gets above 70. And we had that happen back in, uh, uh, looks like about, I don't know, March of 2022. Got above 70 in July, September, got below 30. Uh, so, uh, anyhow, my point is, uh, flip the next, uh, to the next chart. Okay. And you know what I wanted to ask you, that we, when we left off on Tuesday, and as soon as we come back, we'll talk about this. You know, we were looking at the GDX on the monthly, you were talking about the aspect of uh, getting above the middle Bollinger Band, right? Yep, yep. And it looks yep. to me like the monthly actually is there right now. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Tim O'Reilly, Tom O'Brien. We are talking gold now. Okay, Tim, go ahead. Hey, chart number seven. Yep. Quick look at that. Okay. It's the monthly XAU gold ratio. And I use the casics on this because it just works. Okay. This chart goes back to like 1984. So it it shows all the signals going back to 1984. And the last signal we got was uh, August of 2022. And uh, this signal is, is are, are really pretty good for the bigger time frame. And it's kind of gone up, kind of going sideways here. But most of these signals, when they get uh, the so, in other words, uh, slow stochastics, gets below minus 10, which it did back in August 2022, and turns up most of the time, those are multi-year rallies. So I'm thinking the, the August of last year was the bottom. I uh, see, yep. So so I'm thinking the market is actually in a bull trend right now since August 2022. So flip to chart eight real quick. Okay, I'm there. So now we're into a real small time frame, and I got a minute to, to talk about it. But, you know, this head and shoulders bottom formed the top windows of the GDX. Yes. And I thought the October low was probably the head. He had a right uh, shoulder, uh, the neckline was around 30. We had a sign of strength through the neckline. And uh, the bottom window is the 18 day average up down volume. The next window up is the uh, 18 day average advanced decline. And as long as both those two indicators remain above 10, uh, they are one's minus, uh, one's plus 16, the other is plus 20, then that probably 30 area on GDX will hold. 
And, and I, just to give you an idea, folks, okay, you know, at that sign of strength, we went up with 41 million shares. And Tim, we were, we've only done 14 million today as we're coming back into it. 41 million to right. 14. Pretty, pretty wild. Well, listen, man, you yeah. have a great weekend, a safe weekend. We look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday, Tim. All right, thank you. Okay, stay right, uh, stay right there. This is a fast hour, man. Uh, have a great one. Have a safe one, folks.